Welcome back. McStockster here. Today I'm going to show you how I use Excel to analyze the SPX options using Thinkorswim as the data. I'm uh, not feeling 100%, but I'm just trying to caffeinate and stimulate through this. Hopefully I sound all right. So here we go. All right. So I use the think or swim also how about this little circle little obs upgrade over the weekend a little bit better i think okay so i use think or swim time and sales to come up with some analyses that i do every night and i'm just going to show you what i do and then at the end i'll teach you exactly how i do it in excel if if it wasn't clear so to start the first thing i use the first thing i do every day <clears throat> Excuse me. At the end of the day is uh, I use this little think or swim time and sales guy. This is in the trade tab of think or swim and the options. And then I just detach this little part. So I do two different filters for now. And um, I'll just show you how I do that. So what this gives you is the time and sales. And when I click this little drop down here it's going to populate all the data using these filters and right now I do two I use this set of filters here which is basically all the monthly OPEXs I do the AM and PM monthly option expirations and if you see right here you see I leave out the quarterlies and the weeklies that aren't on an OPEX the, the main monthlies have these 100s right so I select all those and then if a weekly falls on that Friday you know the the ones that show 100 here they they settle in the morning but I also want the ones that end at 3 p.m. Chicago time on that Friday so I select these guys too just a little uh, zoomed out version of what that looks like sorry for this screen being small the font that is um, so here it is. I got my March ones. Today is March 15th, Wednesday. So I got these two Fridays, and then April, and so on. You can see that. So those are my filters, and for these, I do a quantity of one to max. You uh, have to set that to one because sometimes there's um, zero values that, you know, I don't know what those are, but they, they mess up the... Uh, the analysis so I do quantity at minimum of one then my second one I do is up here and all it is that's the only filter you can see right there I select all series um, so I don't even filter it so the only filter is quantity by one so this gives me basically all the data right now I'm doing it separate just because it I don't use the all the I only use the all the data right now for one little thing the zero DTE or one DTE I, I change it around but mostly I think the good stuff is, are these right here that come in the monthly options. Okay, and so what I'm going to show you, if you don't know how to do, if you didn't know that this was possible, I got a blank Excel sheet here. I'm going to go back to my monthly. I hit, click an option here, and you hit Control A, Control A, and then Control C, and then you can paste that into Excel. It takes a minute, so... I'm going to do shift and just grab me four or five and then I'm going to do control C and then I'm going to come to this Excel sheet and paste those here in cell B and that's what it gives you this is what you start this is the main thing you know if you know how to use Excel and didn't know this part you can basically do the rest <laughs> by yourself but so this will paste like this and you see this little control here because this second column here has three lines I always click this little paste thing and match destination formatting so it gives it to me nice and tight like that alright so that's what comes in these are the only one two three four five six seven eight nine ten columns that come in this is the spread column or the condition column here and just those ones I grabbed none of those were spreads but that's where the spreads be there they are so all right 
So now we got this. Bear with me. Learning how to zoom around on the screen so y'all can see, because apparently when I share my whole screen, you know, it's the font's too small because I got a big 32 inch here. And all right, next. So I'm going to close that little spreadsheet and then show you what I do here on mine. So here's my spreadsheet. I got all these tabs down here and I'll show you how what I got in there. So I, like I said, I copy all the monthly data and then I do all the data separate um, for now and I'm going to I'm going to tweak that later. So bring, let's check out the monthly data tab. So this is where the Excel Excel skills come in. Uh, also, just briefly, I got a shout out to. I was I never knew that you could paste this data, and I built all this on, on my own. But I got the idea from my buddy Tiff, who shared with me one day. Did you know you can copy and paste? And then from there, we have the price that the option traded and the market at the time, and we can take that and figure out if it was a buy or a sell, and then look at this data and figure out the premium. And so he gave me this idea. Thank you, Tiff. And then show me his version just kind of like i'm doing now i'm showing you what i did and then you can make your own and tweak it however you want and so i just want to say that this wasn't my original idea and so yeah into the spreadsheet so it gave us remember let me zoom into the top corner here it gave us these columns but it actually didn't give you the column you'll have to type those out and so what I do at the beginning of the day is I actually paste it into B2 and then I go to a sheet that I've done the day before and I'll paste in all my headers all right so I'm gonna teach you I'm gonna show you everything I did here so I made my the first column I did was strike um, the second one I did here expiration then I did option type is what I should have called this column but I call it caller put and then premium and then I was just, and then, you know, I don't know if these are any good, but I did the spread, the difference from spread. And then this is a big one here, bought or sold. And then I did one more, the percentage of the day's range. And then here, um, let me scroll my screen over. Here I, I log the high and low of the day. I actually do this with a formula using the Excel native stuff. If you didn't know, Excel has, you can do stock stuff in Excel if you label it a stock convert it to stock here and it can give you a few data points it's okay it's really not great I need to come up with something better but I use it to get the high and the low but if you ever hit if you ever hit um, like power pivot and refresh all I did that a while ago um, sorry it's not showing but the refresh all will change your prices and I'm actually showing you yesterday's analysis so when I hit refresh it changed my high and low to today's high and low and messed it all up so right now here it doesn't actually show it in the formula this is just a raw number but the real formula I take um, I just take that what Excel gives me and I take like the right um, here are the formulas I do and I made myself a note paste these back to s2 but this formula gosh zooming on this screen is freaking hard but this let me show you that formula is right of the cell that I'm in no sorry it takes what should be x1 and takes the right seven digits let me zoom back over to x1 that is where I got my That's the W1 high, which is from the data of the S&P 500. Dang, this is taking longer than it should. But long story short, I take the high. Then you're going to use the right formula and get the right seven digits. Okay, four numbers, two decimals, and a decimal. Seven characters. And that will give you this to get rid of the dollar sign. Now, to get this strike formula, um, I let me show you all that at the end. It, I, I'll show you a little preview of it, though. That's, that's the formula. This was the hardest one to get. Or actually, the hardest was the bought, middle, and sold. There it is. There's my work. Um, but I, I'll show you like exactly how to build that at the end. So having said that, this will probably be a longer video, and I'm super duper sorry about the length. I'm trying to go fast, but show you what I did. So here's the whole sheet. Let me show you my ideas or what I did here for my analyses. So my first tab here, I like to do buy expiration. 
So I sort it, and I'm only using the premium uh, for the monthlies here, and I'm only using the ones that are, I'm excluding the ones between the spreads. So that gives me only bought or sold, and the color scheme I chose, <clears throat> excuse me one sec, Got to get some caffeine up in here. I like, I know that these blend together. This isn't the best, but I, I don't care that much always between calls or puts. I just want to know bullish or bearish. So I got this color scheme from my favorite follow on Twitter, Dr. Harlan. Blue is bullish, red is bearish. And so even though there's two shades of blue, that's for the calls and, sold, calls and puts bought and sold. So here by expiration just shows me like today, or this was yesterday, what month are they playing mostly in terms of premium. And so to get the premium, by the way, I'm just multiplying the option contract times 100. You know, if you buy an option for a dollar, it costs you out of your pocket 100 bucks based off that. So that's how I get premium. Um, I do buy expiration. And if I want to zoom, I guess, I guess that looks all right. Hey, so that's one. All right, next I do buy strike to see what strikes are they hitting. Now, this is going to have all of the expirations included. And usually I do a size filter of greater than 10 contracts. For this, I actually left that off. I would do that here in quantity. Oh, I'm sorry. I do have that filter turned on. See, like this. Zoom. Gosh, freaking zooming is hard. I'm sorry, y'all. Bam. All right, see that? You probably could have seen it anyways. This is a waste. But that is, so I do 10 or more. All right, so I do buy strike. Let's see where the money's at. Yesterday, it's clearly around this 39.50 area. And I could just see this cluster here. Here we got Johnny 5000, always, always selling 5000 puts. I, I think they use that to finance other stuff. And if I wanted to look into that, I can. Another tab I do here is the 0 to 1 DTE. So I do that by filtering the expiration. And yesterday I did 15th of March and 14th of March. And you can see just the cluster of where they traded all their options. So that's buy strike but for 0 DTE. Now this is a pretty cool one. Next tab over I did buy underlying. And I'm sorry these are kind of small but it, I just got to share the whole thing. So I've got the x-axis as the underlying price and then the y-axis again is premium i think the y-axis on all these is going to be premium um and then i sort it by time okay so underlying tells me what price were they making their buys and sells and here again i only got it by calls and puts i'm sorry by bought or sold and the middle transactions are expired. Now this is a cool one. If you want to hunt down what somebody did or when, this is how I do it. I do time on the x-axis. And again, these are just the uh, filtered out between the spread. But here I got another one by time where I actually, I do all the transactions. And see, it's just so tiny you can barely see. But this is, if I really want to see where we drop some premium, I can track it down like this. So I have time and sales. So I can hover my mouse over this. Let's zoom you in. I can hover my mouse over this. And a mid call was at 11.23.53 my time. And so if I want to track this guy down, I come over here to my monthly data. I have time and sales. I'm going to go back to 11.23. Another little thing I do is I do a conditional formatting on premium. If it's over a million, it'll give me, uh, I've made it highlight green. So I'm, I'm looking over here in the first column. I'm going to find that 1123. A couple of biggies went by there. A 32 million. A um, couple of biggies. I saw 30 million go by. But let's, let's find this guy at 1123. Was that not it? That was a big old chunk. Look at all that. That was at 11.28 and 14 seconds. All these. Um, stay on task. Stay on task. 11.23. Hey, yo. 146 million. 145 million. So what strikes are they doing? Ooh. Sneaky. Sneaky. Deep in the money and out of the money stuff. 
So there's our delta. We got deltas of zero or one. Interesting. So I can see and find that exact transaction where all that premium went down. What is this total up to? Zoom mode. That is some 485 mil. Half a bill right there done at this timestamp. 11.23.53. So that was one person. So that's why um, that's why I like that time one because I can I can go um, go hunt them down. Sorry, I didn't necessarily mean to change my screen back. So let's go back to time. That's a cool one. I really like that one. All right, my next one I did here. I did buy the Delta. All right, I was curious. You know, are they doing in the money, out of the money? Um, at the money or what and are they doing bullish or bearish so by delta if it's negative you know it's puts so here i can just see there's just big clumps right right near 50 and negative 50 for the at the money options and here's that huge 120 million with a full delta of negative one interesting stuff all right now this was an idea i had here um by percent days range so let me take you to my um let me take you to my monthly data tab and show you this guy. Um, I, my idea was I wanted to see, are they timing, like on a range day, like here's today, here's my daily chart. I wanted to see like at this price range, are they like selling at the top and buying at the bottom or not necessarily selling and buying, but are they bearishing at the top and doing bullish things at the bottom? I wanted to know, I wanted to see, when are these dudes timing the market that good? So I did a percent days range column where I took, uh, let's see if I can zoom you in. I took the high and low, they're way up there. I guess I can go up. And I took the, under. remember it tells you the underlying price at the time. So I subtract the low, I take the underlying price minus the low. And then I divide that by the range, or the high minus the low. There's a formula right there. Can't see it because I'm not zoomed. But it's underlying minus low divided by high minus low. And that will give me the percent days range. So if you nailed it at the high, you're at 100% and 0% at the bottom. So going back to my percent days range, let's just see how they did yesterday. So... Oh, did I mess that up? Hmm. Right before I made this video, I refreshed everything. And I think that messed some things up. It's hard to show yesterday's data. Man, just bear with me. I don't know why that's messed up. I got values over 100. Most likely, these all look fine. I don't see anything over 100. I'm sorry, I shouldn't be debugging live because the, the main thing people hate is long YouTube videos. I, I bet actually just the data's not up to date somehow. Data is correct. Get the data refreshed. There it is. Okay, 0 0.3 all the way up to 98. All right, that's how it should look. So if they were timing it right, I would see like red bars over here, bearish near the 100 and blue. And uh, basically, they didn't. So that idea, I don't know, not even that great. All right, another idea that definitely didn't pan out is I was curious, like, how far away from the spread they um, bought. I was thinking before I learned about that if it's above ask, it's kind of not real, basically, I guess. I was thinking if, they, if it was way outside, I could maybe find, like, a metric of urgency, Turns out didn't really uh, doesn't really work with that, but like these people were ten bucks under the spread and they were all bullish. 
So that would mean if this is right, they were probably market selling. No. Dang it. I don't know. I don't know. But that didn't really work. All right, last thing. Total bought or sold. I like this one to basically find out if the... I kind of interpret it as if they're net more or less selling or buying volatility. I myself, I like to be short volatility. So even if I'm bullish or bearish, I do... Most commonly, I just do vertical spreads. And so if I'm bullish, I will sell a put credit spread... If I'm bearish, I'll do call credit spreads. Um, and this kind of tells me, like, this is just bought or sold. So are they buying options or selling? And sometimes they're, they're kind of different. And I think, you know, I just thought maybe I could figure out if they're kind of selling volatility on uh, real volatile days and buying volatility on, on calm, tight range days. So that's it. Uh, those are my charts I made. Now let's uh, I'll do a little demo of how to how that works. So this is how the data comes in. You know you need to just know how to do a few formulas. You need to know how to use the right formula. So I'll put the formula here. You need to know how to use the mid formula. You need to know how to use the search formula. But if you take the right formula, if just in case you didn't know, equals right is going to take the right however many characters you tell it to of the cell so you tell it the cell and if I, like 40 40 is four characters the space is five and the C is six so if I say take this cell take the six right characters it should give me 40 40 C all right so that's basically how I do it the mid you tell it what point to start counting at and it will give you everything to the right of that number so if we say Start at the one, two, three, fourth character. That should be the M for March. Or I guess I'll start it at the three where the space is and say, give me the three, four, five, six. Give me the six characters to the right of the third character. It should give me that date. Oh, there should be a three there. So maybe I'll start it at the. Oh, I need seven characters. So yeah, that, that's basically how you do it. And then the search is like when, what you got to use to find this X. So equals search returns the number of the character at which a specific character or text string is first found reading left to right, not case sensitive. So search, find the text. I'm going to search for this X within the text and that's going to be this cell and the start number to start looking for it I guess is going to be one and tell me what character the the X is so now I know the fourth character over in this cell right here is the X so I can use that in my left and right formulas so that's that's you know how I did it if you want to copy mine uh, exactly I showed them a little bit at the beginning but I'll show you here again you can pause they're going to look um, long because you know because they are but basically I think I basically just used this kind of idea right here so if you wanted okay yeah I mean that's how I got caller put was the right one the right one character here and then I use an if formula that if it's a C it's a call and if it's not it's a put and instead of doing an if if um, so yeah, I'll go through my, my data now so you can have everything I got. I was real, I was a little hesitant on that. I couldn't decide, but I figure why not? I'm not going to share the whole dang sheet with you, but here I'll share all the hardest parts. So underlying can a strike. This one was tough. Let me zoom in up here. So you see that strike. So I'm taking lengths of B2 Oh, that's if it's 15 or 16 because sometimes the date, the length will be a single digit. This happens on the all data tab a lot. And that way I need to use different lengths. Um, the expiration is just pretty easy. Um, 
I can use nine characters each time because of the space after gives me a little bit of freedom. So like if this was 9th April or 9th March 23, nine characters works. Or if it was 17, nine still works. Okay, collar put. I'm just, like I said, I'm looking at the right one character of B2 here. And so, yeah, all the data basically comes from column B here and column F. The premium, like I said, quantity times price times 100. The spread, I'm just looking at the... So here I did have to search for that X, take the left minus the right from the X and do some stuff there to get... So that should be 30 cents, is that right? It shows negative 30. I didn't care about positive or negative here. The difference from the spread, that was kind of a tricky one. Oh, that's not even right. That should be zero. I was messing around with it. Oh, you can't even see where I'm at. I was messing around with this and forget about that. But this is the good one. Truly sorry for the delay here. This big old big guy, this was the hardest one. And you got to use a greater than, a less than, or equal to. So we're basically analyzing this market one. And I originally, you could do, you could parse out market into bid and ask columns and do it that way. I just wanted to do it all in one. Why not? Whatever. And then um, I do the percent days range. I already told you about that one. So that's the price minus the low divided by the range. Okay, that's everything. Appreciate you watching. Sorry if it was long. How long was this? Does that say 27 minutes? Dang. I'm sorry. That is way too long. Hopefully you learned something. Um, if you watched this long, I doubt it. But if you did, I appreciate you watching. Thanks for tuning in. Later.